Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and I'm so excited because I'm here to talk about a brand new service right here in Norfolk, but also with a very special person, Thelma Drake, Director of Rail and Public Transportation. I had to read that because you've been so many things in the lives of people of Hampton Roads. Today we're here because you're the Director of Rail and Public Transportation. Can we talk train? Absolutely, Bob. Good to be here with Good you. To see you. Now, I got to say, can we talk train? When have you not talked train in the last year and a half? Well, I talk train all the time. <laughs> I learned train immediately when I went in as director of Department of Rail and Public Transportation. Okay, of all those years of driving to Washington, yes, is that when you said, I'm going to start talking train? No, it was when I um, was asked if I would take the position as director of Department of Rail. And um, just wonderful people that work in the agency, in the transit division, as well as in the rail division. So I learned it pretty quickly because of that remarkable offer of was, Norfolk Southern. I was going to say, what did you know about trains? Well, um, when you first took the job? Not very much. In fact, I questioned that. <laughs> and. Um, of course, uh, one of the things that I brought to the table was knowing legislators in Richmond, members of Congress in D.C., having lots of people's phone numbers in my cell phone. And um, so it's been very interesting in the agency that I've played a role they haven't had before. When they needed something from a mayor, I would pick up the phone and call that mayor. Mm -hmm. So it just made it easier for us to connect all the dots and, and fill in the holes. And what I really did is allowed the employees of the agency to just pick up the ball and run. Okay, but now here you are, you're totally preoccupied with the train. I mean, we're sitting there watching the parade in downtown Norfolk, <laughs> and you're, you turn around and say, how can we get the word out about the train? Yes, because I was sitting there and I said, oh my gosh, we don't have a float. <laughs> Why don't we have a float about a train? And I realized because in the time frame that we would have had to get in the parade, we weren't sure that the train could come up in December. That's so right. I, I was like, oh, well, that's the reason we don't have a train <laughs> in, the, in the parade. Well, okay, because I'm going to, yeah, you really messed things up. I did. Because things that are done <laughs> by government are always over budget and late on schedule. So let's rewind to what, January 2010? January of 10, end of January. Okay. You attend what's supposed to be a sleepy little community meeting. Oh, sleepy. A thousand people were I in know. that meeting. <laughs> so other people were interested in a train. It was a public hearing for the federal project into Norfolk, the high-speed rail corridor. The October before, the entire region came together and voted for, that the high-speed rail corridor come into Norfolk rather than into Newport News. Mm -hmm. So that was a real effort on the part of the community of the Hampton Roads TPO mm -hmm. and um, all of our mayors to come together and say, this makes sense. We're the largest section of Virginia that didn't have passenger rail service. So they all united on that. And um, so we were in the midst of looking at this study, which, by the way, just last week, we finally got the record of decision from that work of January 2010. It was submitted to them in December of 10, and we got the final document that we need uh, just last week. Well, wow. I did do that's they a difference in Do they federal. realize the train already ran? Well, that's a state project, so yeah. it's a difference in federal and state. But kind of setting the, I mean, what was, because we have now been celebrating record ridership on the tide. Yes. Uh, we had, you know, you had to put extra cars on the train the first time. So we've got these tremendous successes, but we got to remember some of these successes were born out of some controversy. Okay. Not that I want to dredge all that up. Well, very But much in this so. meeting, there were some naysayers. Yes. Not many, because people in this region have been very united about wanting train service mm -hmm. and wanting faster and faster train service. And this is really our first step. And now with that record of decision last week, um, we are part of the high-speed rail corridor. But you have to walk before you run, mm -hmm. and to have train service into a region makes a big difference, too. Okay. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's got to be done. So why deliver it 11 months early? Well, we could have delayed <laughs> and had all, all the improvements in place, but I thought the public would be much happier go, leaving 10 minutes earlier out of Norfolk and being able to have train service than waiting six or eight months. Yeah. So it's working. I, I, people were very pleased, and I've actually had people tell me the train was going faster than cars in the 460 corridor. So. Well, I, I found out, I think you might have been on the, the no, you, you were coming back the next day, but the, the next day, a little inside scoop, they were all prepared for welcoming the train. 
and somebody came running into the room and said, you better get out here, it's early. The it, train was actually <laughs> early showing up the first day. And it was early the second day, yeah. too. So, um, so that's good. And it shows how well our railroads are working together. And because that's what's so special about this train is in the past, you didn't go north. You didn't go to D.C. You didn't go to New York. You didn't go to Boston. But through the work of both Norfolk Southern and CSX, there's now a connection track south of Petersburg that you rode over mm -hmm. uh, that was built as part of this project so that we can connect to CSX and go north. Now, let's talk turkey about CSX and Norfolk Southern because they are competitors. They are competitors. They're also primarily freight. Yes. Who got out of the passenger business long, long time ago. So how did you they get in the I mean, how did they go from, ooh, no, 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 to embracing it? Well, and I actually really thought a lot about that because they make their money in freight. Mm -hmm. And passenger really interferes, you know, and they have to be very careful to make sure that their freight schedule and we're not interfering with that, that would, would really cause them harm. I think it's because they're good corporate citizens and they want to work with the community. And look at just what a great event for the hometown of Norfolk Southern to now have train service. Mm -hmm. And that they were such a major part of making it happen. But now we won't see the day where there'll be 200 car coal cars behind the passenger. No, because line. what was, what happens is the state bought what we call train slots. The okay, ability, now you're, you're going to head down a rail that we have to, and you're going to make it sound really sensible, right? Yes, I okay, will make good. it sensible. <laughs> That's the way my brain likes to work. But um, what we bought from Norfolk Southern were three train slots. So we've already paid for those with Norfolk Southern. We this have is not, time on the track? It's, type it's a slot on their track to okay. be able to run and to be able to intermingle with their freight. So what they did with the funding that we, that we spent to buy the time the slots, we is the, the state. state. Um, they've done improvements on their track to allow, uh, we call them crossovers, so that if you're going west on that a track, which is two tracks, one goes east, one goes west, they don't cross over today. But there's a signal system now and crossovers in place so that a faster moving passenger will just pass the slower moving uh, coal okay. or freight. And it also benefits our port and the movement of freight because a faster moving freight will be able to pass a slower or coal. So it, it benefits all the way around. And we like that. We like that there'll be multiple uses of improvements that are purchased through the state. Awesome. Now, I know that on opening day, and, and, and well-deserved, the, the credit you get for bringing this idea to life. But can I be candid? It makes so much sense. Oh, it does make sense. I mean, and, <laughs> and actually, the reaction to the train, the number of people on the train so far, and in, in what? It's been running now a week. Mm -hmm for revenue um, is doing very well. So it just shows the pent up demand that we're here, that people were very interested in it. And I just want to make sure that we keep it in the front of their minds that there's a great option to not sit in the traffic on 64 and 95. To tell you, I came home from DC last Friday. It took me four hours to get to Ashland. Wow. So, and the whole time I'm thinking, it should have been on a train. But I was <laughs> you a have little, that option now. Uh, well, I was a little further west. I was in the Tysons area. Okay. So four hours from Tysons to Ashland. You know, one of the things we've, uh, we've talked about is the, uh, the impact of the train on the, on the city of Norfolk, on the residents, really has made, a, made us even more of a connection to the whole country in that we have a state-of-the-art premier airport. Yes. If you choose to drive, we've got the makings of a good interstate system that that starts right here and now and now rail so and it's the whole rail. movie all at once we're the only light rail system in virginia mm -hmm. and certainly that connection at harbor park that once this is extended to virginia beach will be one of only a handful of places in the country where let's say you leave dc on a Friday and you come into Norfolk by train, get on the light rail and go to the oceanfront, there's only a handful of cities you can do that and not even need a car right. for your vacation. My husband has a great saying and it is that half the fun of going is getting there. Well, let's so talk this is great fun getting there. Yeah, let's talk about that because I went over the Monday before it opened to the uh, cookout that we had over it. Oh, you went the, to St. Julian's. Yes. yes, and it was so cool because for most people, me included, we've never been in a dining car. And so we were having hot dogs and hamburgers, and to see these kids, what was really cool was to see these kids' lies, eyes light up because they saw a vision of what they could do. Yes. That there were no boundaries to life anymore. They could go anywhere. 
and it was so cool to see the community come together. But that was that's where it really hit home with me. When you and I love flying because you get there quickly, but you're getting to your destination, whereas the destination begins at Harbor Park with trains. Exactly, absolutely. And you felt, yeah, I felt you're that. You're comfortable. In the, the seats are bigger. You have the cafe car, like you've said, mm -hmm. to have a, a car where you can go in and sit down and eat. And we, in fact. We sold out of food very quickly on that first revenue train. Wow. I felt sorry for the people who got on a little further in town. <laughs> they probably got on and thought they'd have breakfast or coffee, and we had already bought it all out. So, okay, so the train does stop at stops along the way, too. Yes, that you it can does. get on and off on. Yes. Right? Um, the first stop after you leave Nor Norfolk is called Ettrick, it's in the Petersburg area. Okay. And then Richmond Staples Mill. We do not go to downtown Richmond right now because it would add too much time to the train. Okay. And then Ashland, so if you've got someone, you know, in college in Ashland at, at Randolph-Macon, a oh. good way to go back and forth. I mean, think as a parent yeah. how much more comfortable you are knowing you're, that your college student's on that train going back and forth. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, I, I've been stuck on 64 or 95. And then after Ashland, it's Fredericksburg. We stop at Quantico Marine Base. Uh, we stop in Woodbridge. We stopped in Alexandria, which if you're using the metro in the D.C. area, you really need to look at the metro map as well because it might be easier to get off in Alexandria and take the metro. Like you talked about Arlington National Cemetery. Yeah, we were thinking about maybe doing that. And that's, that's where you would get off and get right on the metro. It's right there by the train station and go um, to Arlington National Cemetery. Or you can go into LaFont and then into Union Station. Now, unlike the light rail, where you can get on and off and it's part of your fee, when you buy a ticket, you buy a ticket to a destination, right? You do. You can't go further. You get off sooner. If you buy your ticket to Union Station and say, oh my gosh, I want to get off in Alexandria because here's the metro, certainly you could do that. Okay. But you can't go beyond Union Station. That conductor's going to come and want to see your next ticket. <laughs> do you know what you've done to us? You've given us a whole new opportunity to rethink. Oh, to rethink transportation. Yeah. Uh, Right. Instead of paying for the gas. And do you know what parking costs in New York City and in D.C.? I mean, gosh, I would, last time I was in New York was a one, and it was $50 a day yeah. in the hotel. It's crazy. Uh, D.C., last I paid was 25 but it's $25, $35 a day. Now, okay, now I've heard some people say, but it's four, four and a half hours of D.C. But you know what? If you were driving to D.C. to get to a morning meeting, you'd have to leave five, six hours to get there and make sure because you don't know what's going to happen on 95. <laughs> it's the not knowing what's going to happen. I, if I drive and have to drive up because of times or something, what I'm doing, I'm always either an hour early or I'm late because you can't anticipate the traffic. Now, ticketing. Yes. Uh, it's a little, it's, it's state of the art. It's now e-ticket and that's new from just this summer. It used to be that you got something you took to the station and it read it and gave mm -hmm. you a ticket. Today it's just like the airline. When you go online, you book your ticket, you can look at the options of where you want to go. Um, and what's nice for Norfolk is it gives you the options of using Newport News service. There's two round trips a day from Newport News, but the Amtrak bus still will come to Harbor Park and to Virginia Beach. So you could leave early in the morning if you wanted on um, Norfolk service, mm -hmm. leaving your car at Harbor Park, and it might be more convenient for you to come back on one of the Newport News services. So you can see all of that on the Amtrak website, and then you come on the Amtrak bus back to Harbor Park. Wow. So it's it's just gives us three services right away while we work towards bringing up those other two trains. Now I know you've been out there almost handing out newspapers with the pilot in the first in the first day of service. I've been doing brochures everywhere say, I've been. I was going to say you, you 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 normally have a box of brochures. Yes, you, leaving you're not, on counters. You're you're not stamping tickets, are you? No, when they get on not the train. doing any of that. Amtrak sells the tickets. <laughs> they set the pricing, all of that. But we were really grateful to them that. In the midst of this, they heard what we said and that people were saying, can't we have a special deal? This is new service. Mm -hmm. And they did that for us. Now, that expired Monday. You had to have bought your, booked your ticket by Monday and traveled during the month of December. But watch for, for ticket sales. That happens, too. I was going to say, because this is not a government-run operation. I mean, this is business-oriented, so it's, it's rev the revenue is based on demand. Right, and so there will be fluctuations. In Fare rates. box is what we really look at: is how much are we um, generating from that train? And the 
other Virginia service. It's called Amtrak Virginia. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see that, it means this is a train run by Virginia. Virginia pays the operating cost and the capital to bring it up. The Lynchburg service, which started in October of 2009, has always paid for itself. We do not subsidize passenger rail in Virginia. And the projections were Norfolk would run as well, which right out of the box it appears to be. But we want to make sure this runs very, very well and that it pays for itself. Now, the thing, all the rules change in October of 13 because there are federal changes coming. And that's why you'll hear us talk about needing money to subsidize passenger rail. I keep asking Congress to give me a couple more years to put a little more money in the bank. We actually have money in the bank. We've not only paid, but we've actually got a pot of money in the bank. Okay, well, I'm going to plead with the viewer to go to AmtrakVirginia.com. It's, no, it's www.amtrak.com. And it's very user-friendly, just like an air, airlines. You can put in where you want to leave from, where you want to go to, and it will show you what the options are. Or if you'd rather call, it's 1-800-USA-RAIL. Okay. I'm going to plead with the viewer to go there yes. and buy a I'm ticket pleading. so you can relax. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, I'm not going to relax until it really shows. <laughs> yeah, uh, same thing with Lynchburg. We thought that it was just a fluke that it ran so well. and. I actually went to the assembly and got permission to use some funding because I knew I was going to need it. I've never had to touch it. Cool. Because Isn't that cool? And I want to see that from Norfolk. It just makes so much sense. Well, that helps us bring up trains two and three, too, that we can show the demand and the value of the investment. Okay, who mentioned that first? You or the mayor? Um, we probably both mentioned <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, I want to change course a little bit here. Let me go back to 19, I don't know, 85, 1990 maybe? What was going on in Thelma Drake's life? Well, I was just a very active realtor. Yeah, um, in worked, Ocean View. Right? In Ocean View, but certainly worked the whole South Side market. And because when someone came new to the area, I wanted them just to have the best options and make the best choice for their family. But they certainly got to see Norfolk as well as <laughs> everywhere else. But okay, so most people would be satisfied being a successful realtor, mom, right? Yeah, I have two grown children. And. Did You didn't think about trains back then. You nope. were thinking about what? I was thinking about um, helping people have the American dream of owning their own home. And I will tell you, some people were geared for it, some people weren't. And mm -hmm. some people had to work for a couple years before they could do it. And that was probably the most rewarding when they would call up and say, I did everything you said and I'm ready to buy a house. So when did you sit down and say, I think I'll be a state delegate? I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, what happened, and this is probably my most frequently asked question, how did that happen? Uh, the chairman of the Norfolk Republican Party called me in 1993 and asked me to run for the House of Delegates. And my answer was no, I don't do that. So what I, happened? I help other people do that. <laughs> so because I'd always been involved in the community and I'd already always been involved politically. I just felt mm -hmm. we have a responsibility as citizens to do those things. So it took me a month and I thought about it and there were a couple things that just really stood out. One, everyday people have to be involved in government. And second, that if I didn't do it, I'd always feel there was something I should have done that I didn't do. So I did it. We jumped in very late in the race because I took that mm -hmm. whole 30 days uh, to, to come to that conclusion. We were just a group of volunteers. We raised $30,000 and came very close but did not win. And then consciously made the decision to run in 1995. And that is the year that I won and served in the House of Delegates until I got another phone call. Well, then I, okay, so now <laughs> you're sitting at the kitchen table and said, I think I'll run for Congress? Well, I got another phone call, <laughs> but this time they said, will you come and talk to us? They didn't go to oh. the phone. So I said, well, sure. I didn't know what, you know, the folks who called me, Leo Wardrop being one of them, Delegate Leo Wardrop then. And um, so I went out and talked to him, and he told me that Congressman Schrock was not going to continue seeking re-election and would I consider running. And I said, well, you'll have to let me go talk to Ted. So I did call him back that evening. We figured, Ted what a being, remarkable... Ted being... My husband, yeah. Ted, yes, absolutely. So, but what a remarkable opportunity mm -hmm. to run for the U.S. Congress. And turns out I was the 203rd woman to serve mm -hmm. in the U.S. Congress. And stuck on 94 and 64 a lot. Yes, and I will tell you, my best time was three and a half hours, my worst was 11, and my average was five to seven. So your folks that think four, four and a half is too much time on a train, <laughs> sure beats five to seven. So in other words, this whole train thing, 
is personal to you. It is, and Ted used to always encourage me to go to Newport News and take that train. But I thought, gee, by the time I drive to Newport News, mm -hmm. and by the time I have to drive back, I'll just keep driving. Eric Cantor used to tell me I should go to Richmond Staples Mill, and I thought, What's the point in that? I'm halfway there. So had this train been in place when I served in Congress, absolutely, I would have used this Hey, well, you know what? I'll close with something. Train's in place now. Train's in place. Yeah. So we're hoping lots of people take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for everything oh, that thanks, you've Bob. done, not just with the train and selling tickets, but also with uh, your commitment to serving our region and our country. Well, Bob, and it's with the help of a lot of great partners. You've heard us talk about Norfolk Southern and CSX, mm -hmm. the city of Norfolk. I mean, I would call them up and say, this is what I need, and they would do it immediately. So it just kept moving forward, and certainly Amtrak, and then the great staff at DRPT. Okay, well, you know that Norfolk is thinking up more visionary ideas about transportation. We're happy to talk to them. We like visionary ideas. We'll talk with you. Thank you, Bob. Th thanks for joining us. Super. <laughs>